This is a summary of oxidizing agent and reducing agent. So here in your reference book, it states the definition of oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. I will try to use the equation below here to help explain this concept further. So we have learned that in a redox reaction, there must be oxidation taking place and reduction taking place. So in a redox reaction, a substance must be reduced and a substance must be oxidized. So with this information, this substance that is reduced, we call it an oxidizing agent. Why is that so? Because this substance, my oxidizing agent, oxidizes others. And for this substance that is being oxidized, what do we call it? We call it a reducing agent because it reduces others. So now we know what an oxidizing agent does, which is oxidizing others itself, it will be reduced. And now we know that a reducing agent reduces others itself being oxidized. Let's see what are some examples of a oxidizing agent. So this here are examples of oxidizing agents, the most common one being potassium manganate. And on the other side, these are substances that are reducing agents, the common one being potassium iodide. So how do we test for an oxidizing agent? So let's say we want to find out if this oxidizing agent that is being reduced is present. It must always take place together. So what we can do is we can add a reducing agent and see if it gets oxidized. Because if it gets oxidized, means my oxidizing agent is present. So what to do to test for an oxidizing agent is to add a reducing agent and see if it's being oxidized. So if you take a look here, what we are adding here is our potassium iodide and we want to see if our potassium iodide gets oxidized. So it says here that if indeed oxidizing agent is present, our potassium iodide will get oxidized. So our potassium iodide will turn from colorless to reddish brown. So indeed, if this happens, if my reducing agent potassium iodide turns from colorless to reddish brown, means it has been oxidized, which means that my oxidizing agent is present. However, if my potassium iodide remains colorless and there is no change, means my potassium iodide did not get oxidized. So the substance inside is not an oxidizing agent. So what happens if I want to test for my reducing agent? So this is my reducing agent. I want to test for it. Okay, means that if this is present, it would be reducing something else. So which means that I would want to add my oxidizing agent to see if it gets reduced. If it gets reduced, then yes, my reducing agent is present. So here, what am I adding? I'm adding my oxidizing agent, which is potassium manganate. And let's see if potassium manganate gets reduced. So potassium manganate, if indeed it gets reduced, it will turn from purple to colorless. So indeed, if it turns from purple to colorless, means I do have my, it, it got reduced, and I do have my reducing agent. Okay. What happens if my potassium permanganate remains purple? If my potassium permanganate remains purple, means my oxidizing agent, potassium manganate, did not get reduced. And if it did not get reduced, means there is no reducing agent. Finally, one last note is to note that a substance can be both 
an oxidizing agent or a reducing agent depending on the situation. So in certain situations, a substance could oxidize another substance acting as an oxidizing agent or if another situation, that same substance can reduce others acting as a reducing agent. So it's possible that a substance can be both an OA and an RA. Question 1. Which of the following is sulfur dioxide acting as an oxidizing agent? So again, oxidizing agent means itself will be reduced. So let's take a look at the following. Okay, there are four options over here. So let's take a look and see which one of it sulfur dioxide is being reduced. So to know if it's being reduced or not, being reduced means a loss of oxygen or gain of hydrogen or gain of electrons or a decrease in oxidation state. So let's look at the ones that are more straightforward. Okay, So option A is not as straightforward. So we skip option A first. Option B is straightforward because you can see that sulfur dioxide has lost oxygen. Okay, That means it has been reduced. All right. Then if you look at option C, not as straightforward as well. And option D is straightforward. Sulfur dioxide has gained oxygen. Means sulfur dioxide has been oxidized. So no, it, in this situation, it is not an oxidizing agent because oxidizing agent should be reduced. But in this case, it is being oxidized. So it's acting as something else, the opposite of it. So answer would be B. However, if you would like to check why options A and C is wrong, because it's not straightforward, we usually use the oxidation state. For all those that is not straightforward, we will try to look at the oxidation state. So for oxygen, it's minus 2. There are 2 of it, which means that our sulfur will have to be oxidation state of plus 4. Hydrogen here is plus 1. There are 2 of it. And oxygen is minus 2. So it does give you a total of 0. Hydrogen is plus 1. Here we have 2 of it. Oxygen is minus 2. Here we have 3 of it. Okay, so plus 2 minus 6. So this will give me a plus 4. So if you notice, there is no change in oxidation state. Whether is it sulfur? Oxygen or hydrogen. There is no change. Therefore, this is not a redox reaction. If you look at option C, okay, again, if it's not clear, we use oxidation state. So let's try. This is the same thing as the above. So this oxidation state is minus 2. This oxidation state is plus 4. Sodium hydroxide, so let's try. Sodium is plus 1. Oxygen is minus 2. In this case, this is hydroxide ion, where this whole thing gives you a minus. So if this is minus 2 and this is minus, again my hydrogen is the same, which is plus 1. Okay, so this gives us a total of 0 for sodium hydroxide as well. Next, we look at this. Sodium is plus 1 because it's group 1. Oxygen is minus 2. And there is here 3 of it. For sodium, there is 2 of it. So this will give me a plus 2. This will give me a minus 6. Which means my sulfur has to be a plus 4. Next, my hydrogen. This is plus 1, there is 2 of it, this is minus 2, so this is um, giving a total of 0 as well. So if we compare our sulfur and sulfur, there is still no change. Our oxygen is throughout all the same at minus 2, our hydrogen is the same at plus 1. So again, in this case, there is no change in oxidation state, 
So option C is also not a redox reaction. So that brings us back to our question number one, where our answer is B because sulfur dioxide is reduced to sulfur. So once it's being reduced, means it is an oxidizing agent. In this question, it asks you what does an oxidizing agent do, and it gives you some options. Okay, so let's take a look at the options first. First of all, it says that it turns methyl orange yellow. If you look at our reference book, methyl orange is an indicator for acid and alkalines, not an oxidizing agent, not a reducing agent. It is not found in redox reaction. Then we are left with B and C, which we can find these two substances under redox reactions. And we look at option D, it says it turns universal indicator red. Again, universal indicator is a test for acid or alkali. So option A and D is not what we are looking for. Then now let's look at what an oxidizing agent does. So an oxidizing agent will be itself reduced and what it does is to oxidize others. So if there is an oxidizing agent present, we will see that a substance is being oxidized and this substance that is being oxidized will be a reducing agent. So if we look at these two options, potassium iodide is the reducing agent. And this reducing agent, potassium iodide, does get oxidized because why? It turns to brown. If you remember, reducing agent potassium iodide will turn from colorless to brown if it gets oxidized. So yes, potassium iodide gets oxidized. So since option C, potassium iodide gets oxidized, the answer is C because my agent my agent has oxidized potassium iodide. And if you are wondering about option B, what is option B? So potassium manganate turns from purple to colorless, right? Potassium permanganate is an oxidizing agent. So what happened to it is it became reduced. So this is so option B is being reduced, which means it was this happened because of a reducing agent, not because of an oxidizing agent. Okay, so this was being reduced. So be careful when you see the options. An oxidizing agent, what will it do? It will oxidize others. So this is what happened. It oxidizes potassium iodide, where you see the colorless turning brown. Substance X turns a solution of acidified potassium manganate purple to colorless. Potassium manganate is an oxidizing agent, which means it oxidizes others and itself being reduced. So what happens here is my potassium manganate, which is an oxidizing agent, has shown a color change, purple to colorless, which means it has been reduced. Therefore, the substance that was added to it has to be a reducing agent to reduce my potassium manganate. So I'm testing for a reducing agent in this case. So therefore, what must solution X contain? Solution X must contain a reducing agent. So answer is D. Okay, next one over here. It says that my substance Y produces iodine from potassium iodide. So first of all, for iodine to be produced by potassium iodide, potassium iodide is a reducing agent, okay? which means it has been oxidized. So this is the first one. So we write there, it's a reducing agent and it has been oxidized. Substance Y also changes potassium manganate from purple to colorless. Potassium manganate is an oxidizing agent. And for it to change from purple to colorless means it has been reduced. So the second thing that happens as well is that an oxidizing agent has, is there and has been reduced. 
which means that Y can oxidize potassium iodide, Y can reduce potassium manganate. So how do we describe the behavior of Y? Y is both an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent. So it's possible that there are substances that can do both. So in this case, you can see Y behaving in both an oxidizing agent and reducing agent with potassium permanganate and potassium iodide. Here they say does not involve oxidation or reduction. So we look at option A, hydrogen gains oxygen to get water. So this is oxidation. For the next one, you can look at it in two ways. One, you can look at it as an oxidation state of plus 2 becoming plus 3 where there's an increase in oxidation state. Or you can look at it by losing of the electrons. So this is as well oxidation. Okay. If you look at the next one, okay, H plus and carbonate ion getting this, you may not be able to tell. It takes a while to do that. But we can look at option D first. So hydrogen gain oxygen. So again, there is oxidation definitely. Okay, so since definitely this tree has oxidation, they say oxidation and or reduction. So therefore, the one that does not evolve is option C. Okay, if you want to take a closer look at it, you can check out all the oxidation states of H. H remains as plus 1 and plus 1 in both reactant and product. Carbon remains as plus 4 and plus 4. Oxygen remains as minus 2 and minus 2. Therefore, there is no change in oxidation states for option C at all. So it is not a redox reaction.